It's so hard to believe, but we've done it. We have reached the end of the 2022 college football regular season. One game left to go for the Duke Blue Devils as they will host Wake Forest with a 7-4 overall record for Duke, going for their eighth victory in the first year of the Mike Elko era. We've got so much to discuss in the life of Duke football, and we're doing that on today's show. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us on the show today on this Friday. Happy Black Friday to everyone out there. We hope that you had a tremendous Thanksgiving holiday with your friends, family, and loved ones. You're enjoying Duke basketball right now in Portland, Oregon, playing in the Phil Knight Legacy event. But on today's show, we're talking all things football with my good buddy, Josh Cox, from Duke Football Talk's Section 17 podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to follow our show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils and follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it comes out each day. Be sure to also subscribe to our Lockdown Blue Devils YouTube page to watch the show daily. Thank you for making Lockdown Blue Devils your first watch and first listen every single day. Here he is, my good pal Josh Cox from Duke Football Talk's Section 17 podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Joshua Cox. And Josh, all of a sudden, we look at the calendar, we look at the schedule. There's only one game left in the regular season, man. 11 games have gone by, just one left to go for Duke. Man, the season flew by. It always does, and this one certainly uh, fits that bill as well. Yeah, and here we sit 7-4, and four, and, um, <clears throat> you know, Every single Duke fan on the face of this earth, uh, if you before the season started, said we'll be at, and going into the Wake Forest game seven and four, having already clinched bowl eligibility, uh, uh, you know, at, at win number six, uh, 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 you know, got the seventh win, only lost by two points at Pitt, and now we're heading into Wake Forest, only a three and a half point underdog. I think every single Duke fan would have said, "Sign me up for that." And so, what a successful season so far uh, from Coach Mike Elko and the staff. And uh, now looking forward to this final game uh, coming up uh, against Wake Forest. So it should be a good one. Yeah, one game left to go for Duke. Uh, and, of course, this past Saturday they took on Pitt. So we'll talk about that game first uh, and, and then get you set for this last game of the year for Duke against those Demon Dinkins. So Duke travels up to Pitt. Again, we continue this 2022 year uh, where Duke did not have consecutive road games, meaning they did not have consecutive home games. So up to Pitt they go on the road against the Panthers and a uh, Duke football team that walks away uh, with a two-point defeat. Duke loses by a score of 28-26. Overall, what, what's the one big takeaway you've got from that game? Well, we lost by two points, and we literally gifted, <clears throat> handed them 14 uh, points. We, we gave them the muffed punt in the first half <clears throat> uh, within the five-yard line. Abana Kanda takes the very next – play and rushes it in for a touchdown and then we drop a touchdown pass in the end zone i mean not a difficult hit them in the bread basket those are just plays that come back to haunt you in a game on the road in november in the acc so if you want to look at the glass half full which i try to do i mean we lost by two points and we played did not play well i mean we could never get our footing in the run game it looked like Jordan Waters was running in slow motion out there on some of those delays that we were running. Um, Riley couldn't get his footing. We never could get him out and get him, you know, running the football, which is really where what I feel like it kind of maximizes Riley Leonard's potential is when he's able to run the ball and throw the ball. Uh, but with all that said, with all that said, there we sat in the fourth quarter, scored the touchdown down to <clears throat> had an opportunity to win the game. Just couldn't get any blocks on that Philly special play on the two-point conversion. Didn't put a body on people, and 
that's really all you need on that play is you need to put a body on somebody. And uh, when that doesn't happen, that play is not going to be successful. So at the end of the day, though, once again, I know that that we did not play well. I know that Duke fans are frustrated with the play. But once again, I think even heading into this game, if you just said we lose by two points on the road at Pitt in the freezing cold, I think all the fans would have been like, okay, that's, you know what I mean? I understand. Right. So once again, try to look glass half full there. But man, we're going to look back at this game. And and of course, the Georgia Tech game, we're going to be like, man, those were two wins in our pocket that we just didn't get, didn't come away with. Very frustrating indeed. And, and I do want to talk about Riley Hurts performance in this one I want to talk about Jordan Moore because what a hell of a game he had at that wide receiver spot but but I think bigger picture Josh a lot of people uh, have talked about this Duke offense a season ago featuring Mateo Durant as we so often speak of the one hand one headed rushing attack that Duke had giving him the football and on his way to a program record single season rushing yards and this season Duke has still been effective running the football However, against Pitt this past Saturday, Duke finishes with just 63 total yards rushing. By far one of their worst rushing performances of the season. Why why did that happen? Anything in particular that Pitt was doing? Missed blocks by by the Duke offensive line? What The running backs not going where they needed to? When when you kind of assess the run game for Duke against Pitt, what was the one thing that stood out to you? Or if there were several, what were they? Yeah, well, number one, Pitt is an incredibly talented uh, defensive front, right? They they, they and that's get to the quarterback. To highlight too, sure. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, they they get to the quarterback uh, at an uncanny rate, and then they <clears throat> they stack the box uh, oftentimes with eight guys, and that makes it difficult to run. I don't care if your defense isn't good if you stack the box with eight. I mean, you're you're selling out to you know to stop the run, and they did a lot of that um, for sure. I think the I do think the weather conditions had something to do with it. Um, I just. You know, I, I don't know if the ground was so hard that the cleats weren't like digging in and allowing cuts, uh, but it just really looked like we never could get like a burst of speed um, out of the backfield. And so I, I think that had something to do with it. Um, you know, I'm not definitely not a play call questioner. I'm really not trying to be that guy. It did seem like, though, we were running this kind of delay where we were trying to get Jordan Waters kind of on the outside. And once again, the cuts just weren't there. And I felt like the most uh, success we had in the run game was when we really just ran a dive play where, like, they, he, you know, Jordan or Jalen Coleman just took the ball and ran downhill. And I felt like that was when we really, uh, you know, gain the most yardage. Um, but I thought that was a little frustrating. I will point out a very positive uh, stat that I think Connor O'Neill, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was the one who tweeted this. Jordan Waters coughed up the fumble in the fourth quarter that led to a touchdown, which is obviously not good. But that was the first fumble from a Duke running back the entire season. Wow. Here we sit 11 games in. <clears throat> it was the first a fumble by a running back. And listen, you know how big of a fan of Mateo Durant that I am. Our podcast was Duke fans are, but man, if there was one thing that kind of was difficult last year was that he coughed the ball up quite a bit. And then going back before Mateo, you know, the last the couple of years before it was either the quarterback position, coughing the ball up, running backs. It didn't matter. We were just putting the ball on the ground all the time. And uh, to think that we're 11 games into the season in the fourth quarter of the 11th game of the season, JJ, and the first running back to drop the ball on the ground as a, uh, as a fumble uh, happens at that point. So kudos to those guys. You're not going. You can't expect perfection. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, all that you, to answer your question about rushing. It was a lot of things that came together that just made it difficult on Duke to run the football. Well, fortunately for Duke, they had a good passing attack on the day. Uh, 290 yards passing for Riley Leonard to go along with three scores, and one player in particular really took that next step in the wide receiver room, and we're going to highlight that coming up after our first time out here on Locked On Blue Devils today. Locked On Blue Devils on this Friday is brought to you by our good friends over at Underdog Fantasy. We love them so much, our friends over at Underdog. This is the best place to get plugged in to the fantasy world that's out there, and it's the easiest place to spice up the college football season. What you need to do is go to underdogfantasy.com. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states. 
pick between two and five players across any team. It doesn't have to be for Duke and decide if they will finish higher or lower than a given number. For example, quarterback Riley Leonard, will he finish higher or lower than 150 passing yards against Wake Forest? You make those decisions with underdog. One of the easiest fantasy ways to play games out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. Sign up with the promo code Locked On. That's one word, Locked On, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100, get $100 bucks free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store, Google Play Store. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Locked On. Get in on the college football pick 'em action today. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, I'm JJ Jackson. Alongside my buddy Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. We go back to the fall and the entire offseason. Many people want to know if Jordan Moore is going to be the next starting quarterback for Duke or would it be sophomore Riley Leonard? We're now 11 games into the year. We know that it is Mr. Riley Leonard who has emerged as the quarterback of the future for Duke. And Jordan Moore has made a successful transition to full-time wide receiver, and that was on display on Saturday against Pitt as Jordan Moore was named the ACC Co-Wide Receiver of the Week after a 14-catch, 199-yard performance, one touchdown, four of those catches uh, surpassed 20 yards on the play, including a 49-yard touchdown, which was the longest receiving touchdown on the year for Duke. Jordan Moore was quite special on Saturday. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he ended up with 39.9 fantasy points if you had, uh, <clears throat> if you're in a PPR league. Um, <clears throat> pretty incredible day. And what more can you say about this guy? I mean, he's an athlete, right? He is, uh, I, I believe if we decided that he was going to be a running back um, instead of a wide receiver, we would have these flashes of his just brilliant athleticism um, on display from the running back position. And so, He's the kind of kid that wherever you put him, uh, he's going to maximize um, his opportunities. And I can't say enough <clears throat> about the nature of college football today. If you don't win the starting quarterback job, uh, it is so easy to put your name right in that transfer portal. It's so easy to kind of say, listen, if I'm not going to be the man here, I'm going to go somewhere else and I, and I will be the man. Um, and, the character level and the buy-in that Jordan Moore has with Mike Elko and with Kevin Johns and with this team and program, I think Duke fans need to make sure we we appreciate that because he's he's not doing the easy thing. Uh, making the transition from quarterback to, to wide receiver in Power 5 ACC football is not the easy thing to do. But, man, if he doesn't look like – He's been doing this for years. Um, it's not just, you know, we were waiting uh, on our podcast. We had mentioned for the last couple of weeks that we were kind of waiting for the Jordan Moore breakout. Like we were kind of, we know he's there, but, you know, there have been some games with like three or four catches, you know, 39, 40 yards, something like that. Um, we were waiting for the breakout game. Well, the breakout game happened. And then not only did the breakout game happen at Pitt, but one of the most incredible catches that that we've ever seen from a Duke wide receiver uh, on the sideline there where he makes the catch. They call it incomplete because it looks like he's out of bounds. Just out, that's how far out that ball was. And then they go and review it, and sure enough, he got that foot down. Uh, just an incredible catch by Jordan Moore. And, you know, once again, his whole family's bought in. You know, his younger brother has already committed uh, to play football right. at Duke. Uh, Duke fans may not know this. His sister is a freshman at Duke this year as well. And so, like, they're all bought in here. And it's really, it's really awesome. I hope Duke fans show appreciation to a player like Jordan Moore, just because, like I said, the easy thing to do is I didn't win the job and I'm out. But he didn't. He has turned into a bona fide uh, wide receiver who I personally can't wait to see train this offseason as a wide receiver and see what happens next year. We're talking all ACC honors leading this team, I believe, in that in that wide receiver room. And he's going to have the same quarterback coming back next year. And they're That's tight. That's only going to help, yeah. And they're tight. They are they are great friends. They developed that friendship as they were battling for the quarterback position, um, and they really do click well together. And once again, an offseason 
with Riley Leonard throwing the ball to Jordan Moore, getting timing, getting those, you know, those reads that and once again, I'm not a, a quarterback, but getting or a wide receiver, but getting those reads of like, man, if the safety's above you, we're going to cut that route off and throw back shoulder. You know, if you've got the safety on your shoulder, we're going to throw that deep bomb. Knowing that and just getting more of that camaraderie in the offseason, at the end of the day, man, I, I really love this connection that these two guys are going to have, I believe, in the next couple of seasons moving forward. Here's how good Jordan Moore has been on the season for Duke. He's first on the team with 49 receptions. No one has caught more passes than Jordan Moore on the year and second in receiving yards, 567 receiving yards. Again, the co-ACC Wide receiver of the week, Riley Leonard, a good day throwing the football against Pitt, 24 of 45, 290 yards, and three passing touchdowns. And no interceptions. And no interceptions. Took care of the football. That's what you uh, you absolutely have to highlight with the QB1 there for the Duke Blue Devils. All right, let's take our last break here on the show today, and when we come back, we'll talk about the last regular season game for Duke football here on Locked On Blue Devils. Lockdown Blue Devils today is brought to you by our friends at Upside. Inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back, whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store. We can all agree there is nothing fun about less. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, I don't have to cut back because I get cash back on every purchase. To get started, download the free Upside app, Use my promo code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D, and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Upside users are earning more than $1 million every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D, to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. Upside, a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson alongside my buddy Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. He's on Twitter at Joshua Cox. Uh, Cox. They've got uh, their podcast on Twitter as well, at Duke FB Talk. But uh, what else do you want to say about the podcast this week and how people can go and support? Well, one thing we didn't talk about in this pit game was <clears throat> the decision of uh, Mike Elko and the staff to go for two points, a two point conversion there when we cut the lead to 28 to 20. Um, obviously, that's kind of a newer thing the coaches are doing. And, uh, and, and some of us, I'll, you know, say just didn't get it at the, in the moment. And so we discussed uh, that two point conversion call and the subsequent two point conversion call uh, on the second touchdown. We talked about that. We gave, we were able to give some of, uh, Coach Elko's kind of off-the-record thoughts that he, he gave us Monday at his press conference. So check out that. This week has is, is, is got some good content in it for sure. We talked to Stan Cotton, the voice of the Demon Deacons for Wake Forest, and get some really good insight on them. <clears throat> and then our website, dukefootballtalk.com, there's a shop there where you can get you know Elko era T-shirts and hoodies, GTHC hoodies. Our Bleed Blue shirts are available there in blue, which is the one's – We've been pushing, but there's also black and gray ones there available as well. So, yeah, hit that up um, anytime. Then, obviously, five-star ratings and reviews on the podcast, Section 17, wherever you can find it, Locked On Blue Devils, wherever you're at right now, uh, pause it and go give a five-star rating and review. We both appreciate it. Yeah, it's Black Friday. I would imagine a good number of people are going to have some time in the car uh, driving around from store to store to store to grab all the great deals that are there, and the best thing to do would be to plug up that Section 17 podcast and listen to that, spend some time in the car, uh, and, and Josh and the boys want to be along for the ride as well. You guys love Black Friday holiday shopping. Like, this is the perfect time for you to go on a trip with people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we, in fact, in, in our house, we are uh, developing our extra bedroom. We're going to develop it into, like, a media room. And so uh, we're definitely hitting up the Black Friday stuff today, uh, looking for some, uh, looking for a TV, looking for some stuff to go in that room. And so, you know, Black Friday is great. And and now, you know, really, you can do a lot of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatnot, shopping uh, right from wherever you're at, you know, from your phone. And so, uh, yeah, it should be a good day. But, yeah, turn on the podcast. Uh, we would definitely appreciate it. 
All right, so Wake Forest is who Duke will play tomorrow to close out the regular season. It'll be a game at home. Uh, Duke is going to have the senior festivities, senior day festivities plugged as well. What do we need to know about Wake Forest? What stands out when you look at this matchup, Josh? Well, I mean, everything starts with the offense. It starts with Sam Hartman. Uh, it starts with A.T. Perry. It starts with just the, the, the receivers. Um, Hartman has been an incredibly successful quarterback uh, throughout his career at Wake Forest. This will be his final regular season game. Um, you know, Drake May is getting all of the national exposure, and rightfully so. He, he 100% deserves it. But uh, had Sam Hartman not had a couple of games about three weeks ago, where he struggled a bit, his numbers were right there uh, beside uh, Drake Mays. And so uh, he is not a guy that that Duke fans need to sleep on at all. He's an incredibly talented quarterback. So that's the number one thing. And then it's not just the fact that he's talented and his receivers are very talented as well. It's that mesh offense that they run where, you know, they hold the ball in the, in the stomach of that uh, running back for an extra second or two. And it really does adjust the timing of your pass rush and of your running defense. And they make things difficult there. It's something unique that you don't see with any other team. And so, you know, Coach Elko mentioned on Monday that uh, they implemented that mesh offense after he left Wake Forest. So he doesn't have any kind of inside info on it. Um, he has coached against Dave Clawson and Wake Forest one time at Texas A&M. Uh, so he has faced this mesh offense before <clears throat> as a defensive coordinator, and Texas A&M did get the win in that game. Uh, but once again, it'll be interesting to see uh, how Duke's defense responds this Saturday um, as they take on Wake Forest. Duke is 7-4, and four, exceeded every expectation so far this year, going for their eighth win. But you know in the back of the mind uh, that this will not be the last game for the Blue Devils this season. They're also waiting to see – their bowl game destination. They will find those out still a week to go. We've still got to get through conference championship weekend, and then we get the announcement of bowl games and where the Duke football players will be playing come up bowl time this season. So, so much to celebrate with this Duke football team, and hopefully they can walk away with one more win on the year. They're on senior day at Wallace Wade Stadium. Yeah, and speaking of senior day, JJ, just uh, something to clarify for Duke fans that are that are following closely. As you know, uh, the NCAA granted everyone that played uh, that was a part of a program in 2020 and 2021, I believe, um, a COVID year. Um, and basically it was a, an a extra year of eligibility uh, because of everything they faced in COVID and some of the players not being able to play and whatnot. Um, and so obviously you have guys who have completed their fourth year here at Duke that are eligible to take a COVID year. And so Coach Elko said this uh, in his press conference Monday. He said there may be some people who do not participate in senior day. And he said, take that for what you will. Meaning if they don't participate in senior day, their intentions are to probably return. He said, however, even if they do participate in senior day, um, that means that they don't have their mind fully made up. He has encouraged any player uh, who has any chance of leaving um, to make sure they participate in senior day because he wants to, he wants them to have that honor. He wants their families on the field he really wants that to be something, um, you know, important for the families and whatnot. And so uh, just to keep that in mind, as Duke fans, as we look at Wake Forest, they're, Duke's going to release um, a list of people participating in senior day. And, you know, once again, I mean, we got 26, 27 recruits coming in next year. I mean, not everybody can stay. There's just not enough roster spots. And so, you know, it'll be interesting to see who does uh, and who doesn't. So that's just something to keep our eye on, just kind of a game within the game there, you know, as we follow the program to see who may come back, you know, for that fifth season. One game left to go, and then we'll be focused on that bowl game coming up for Duke. A lot of exciting things happening in the life of the Duke football program. But also what's exciting, Josh, uh, is this means now in the coming weeks, you and I get to uh, shift into Duke men's basketball mode. Yeah. And the people get to hear Josh Cox, Duke men's basketball takes. You've already seen the squad a couple of times in person. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing everything you've got to say about that team. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to talking basketball, man. I'm uh, now that, especially when you got Derek Whitehead back, and you know, coming back to full strength as a team. You know, obviously, you're still, I believe Derek Lively's got some. Uh, he, he's kind of working through some stuff. Whitehead obviously still working through some stuff. Um, but man, this team's fun to watch, and uh, and and Coach Shire's doing a great job. Lo I'd love to see. I'd love to see Coach Shire 
especially in that Kansas game, man, I'd have been all in on my man just losing his crap on Roger Ayers and getting a technical. Like I think that would have been that would have been awesome. I know it's not really in his makeup, uh, but uh, but yeah, man, basketball season's in full fledged. I've been to three three games so far, <clears throat> and um, yeah, so we'll, I can't I can't wait to talk that. Can't wait to talk some NBA. Um, yeah. as the Duke guys are being successful, obviously, there as well. And so it's a great time of year, isn't it? It is indeed. It is indeed. All right, buddy, I'll see you next week. Thanks. For hey, happy Thanksgiving, today, JJ. Josh. All right, that's our good pal Josh Cox joining us on the program there today. Happy Thanksgiving to all of our loyal listeners as well. Hopefully you're enjoying a lot of family time throughout this week. Again, my name is JJ Jackson. You can follow our show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson, underscore. Watch the show daily each and every day on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. We're climbing towards 1,000 subscribers. That's our really big goal that we're trying to accomplish by the end of the calendar year here. A lot of work to be done, but we can do it. We can make it happen. Thanks, as always, for your support of Locked On Blue Devils. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you on Monday. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.